All right, welcome to a quick video. I just wanted to do it on endurance, how you can tell if you're progressing in terms of endurance, and also, you know, how you can see if your endurance ride is perfected and how long you should ride for. Okay, so recently I've been got a new job, so basically I have four days on, four days off. So my four days off, I'm going to do a lot of endurance, obviously, and four days on, I'm going to have a couple rest days and some intensity. So I decided to do six hours because I hadn't done six hours for ages. I wanted to see what my aerobic capacity and capability was because generally for me, I'm not very good aerobically, um, is what I find anyway. Listen, like if I'm doing efforts at the end of the ride, I really, really suffer compared to other people. So, anyway, you can see here it was a six hour ride, which is what we set out to the day 273 TSS, so it's a pretty decent day out. Intensity factor of 0.67. This is based on my FDP of 296. Um, I weigh about 61 to 62 kilos ish. I haven't weighed myself for a bit, but I'm probably around that. Um, but I think my FTP is slightly higher than that because the test I did uh, wasn't very paced very well. But anyway, so we'll, we'll assume it is roughly correct. Um, anyway, it doesn't really matter on, on this ride. I mean, it will be about 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, um, probably more like 0 0.63 or 0 0.64. But you know, you can see very low index, very low um, because it was a very flat ride. So it means you know, obviously normalized power and average power are very similar. Uh, left right balance, left leg obviously is the one I broke. It's not perfect yet, but it's it's getting pretty pretty close. Um, and if we keep scrolling down, you can see some average heart rate numbers, so 148, um, which is my max is about 206 on a, on a very fresh day. On you know, a normal day, probably more like 200. Um, uh, what else can we see here? Not much. Uh, power to heart rate. This is one of the most important measures when you're doing aerobic exercise. You just go in easy zone two, let's say, all day. This is a very important measure because what it, it so what it does, if you don't know what power to heart rate is, is it? So it measures the first half of the ride. It divides the power to heart rate, measures the second half of the ride, measures power to heart rate. Then the difference, it divides those two, so to get the percentage difference, um, which then is this number here. So obviously, if you're, set, say, doing 100 watts, which is, for most people, very easy, um, then, you know, your heart rate at the beginning and end of the ride, even for like four hours, will be identical because you're not tired. Let's say you're doing 300 watts, you know, even if you're doing 300 watts for 20 minutes, like, you start off maybe resting heart rate at like, you know, zone 2, 130, 140. By the end, you're at 190. So obviously your heart rate's increasing. So on a larger scale, you can see if you're aerobically fit or not. Because if you have very low power to heart rate drift, like if let's say this, generally people say less than 5% is like very good. That means that aerobically you're fine. Like you haven't tired that much. So obviously you can see for me, over six hours, I'm getting pretty tired at the end. Um... So if we, we'll, we'll show the heart rate on here as well, um, just so it's a little bit easier to see. So let's say maybe the first three hours. So this is how you can tell how long should my endurance ride be. Obviously, we're going to go into intensity in a minute, but let's say just duration, pure duration. So you can see for the first three hours here, heart rate 4.6%. So again, that would suggest that if I did two hours of 50 as my endurance ride at normalized power of 200 watts, that wouldn't be enough to get adaptions necessarily. It might, it, it, it's not going to be bad for you. You will still get adaptions, but my point is that you know it's not pushing your aerobic capacity as much as it could do. Let's say we well, suddenly got I'm do quite a lot of four hour rides. So I think four hour rides again three point six three percent. Sometimes it's a little bit dodgy if you stop. So obviously I had some stops, so it's not not ideal. But you can see it's it's not much. But then I reckon as soon as we get to over five hours. It's going to go up to 4.2%. And then I reckon this last, the last hour or so um, was probably very, very, a lot higher up. Um, I mean, the other way you can do it is just you can sort of look at this part here. We did 200 normalized heart rate, 1.35%, but also just look at the average heart rate. So for 200 normalized heart rate, 153. Then we can look at sort of the end of the ride and you can see. Power 180, heart rate 150. So obviously I've tired significantly and normalized 192. So yeah, I think that's the only thing with this is just obviously if you have pauses in your ride and stuff like that, it's not ideal. Um, so yeah, that's on a six hour ride. So I should be doing, you know, at least three hour rides because we can clearly show that after three hour rides, I really start to tire. Like this part here again, you'll see normalized 205, heart rate 153. And then at the beginning, we're sort of doing this first part, 193 average, heart rate 140. So you can see a big, obviously watts was slightly different, like 10 watts or so or whatever, but heart rate 10 watts is obviously it's more significant as a proportion. Um, then you can see a ride that I did, this was in June, 
um, I also had heart rate and power. Um, and we can see here that, you know, the numbers were significantly less. I don't know how accurate the power meter was at this point, but you can see that the power to heart rate was like, at this point, was pretty solid. 5.3% for 3 hours 24 shows that, you know, for a three and a half hour ride, I'm not having too much heart rate drift and it's a pretty comfortable day out. So anyway, we'll, we'll ignore duration now because most people don't have unlimited time to trade. Most people aren't like, oh, should I do three hours or six hours today? They're like, I have three hours to trade. So the next thing is intensity. Now, obviously this heart rate data isn't ideal, um, but we can still see the same trends. Um, I now have a new heart rate monitor that actually works. Um, but you can see here, like, so this is uh, 27th of January, 2019, when I was, when I was very strong. Um, my FTP for reference was probably about 3.30 at this point. Um, I think I did a test soon after this to confirm that it was 3.30. So you can see average heart rate, 2.58, 153. Um, so obviously I was, I was a lot fitter then, but also, you'll be able to see that towards the end, um, now, uh, my heart rate was 207, 143. So you can see I, I obviously backed off the power, but the heart rate was still stayed very high, which would show you that aerobically, um, you know, if I'm riding 250 normalized for three hours, my heart rate is over 5%, the power to heart rate drift is over 5%. So again, if, let's say, obviously I can't compare that to now because my numbers are different, um, but you know, as an intensity factor then, it was 0.84 potentially. Uh, I think that might be on my current um, my current FTP. Back then it would have been less. Um, it would have probably been more like 0 0.7, uh, 0.75 maybe. Um, so uh, well, actually we, we'll, we'll have a little check, but uh, as in it was the high end of, um, I think it was that. So yeah, 0 0.74, so that's the very high end of my zone two. So that's the other thing. If you have three hours and you know, you're doing your three hours at 60%, just keep upping it. Um, obviously, you know, generally zone two training, you know, if you have all the time in the world, the best thing is the, the amount of time you can spend in that zone, but obviously that's impossible for a lot of people. So if you do higher zone two, it's pretty good. Um, and Inigo San, Marte, San Milan, he's a very big believer in zone two. Um, there's a good part, podcast from Fast Talk, um, which I try and leave in the description about zone two and upper zone two training. Um, it's called like Fat Max training. It's basically like 75% of FDB, 70, 75 if you ride there, you get super, super efficient at riding that. But obviously, um, the issue is is that it's not great for being punchy. But if you're like a 100 mile TT lab, that's definitely what sort of training you'd be doing. But anyway, I think it's quite interesting just to see um, how you can judge whether your aerobic training is working or not. The other thing you, I guess you can also see is kilojoules. Like if you if you know after like 3,000 kilojoules you really start to struggle, then you know obviously that's a way of a way of making sure that you know you you try and ride to kilojoules instead of necessarily TSS because ultimately that's how much work your body's doing. And your body sort of knows TSS, but kilojoules is ultimately what it does know better. Um, so you can see here, like on this ride here, um, it was a four thousand kilojoule ride, which means it's a pretty tough day out. And then obviously this one was three thousand two hundred, but duration was significantly less. So again, it's like if you know that you know you're going to struggle at certain kilojoules, or you know your race is a certain kilojoule aspect, then this is a pretty good way also. Of figuring out you know if you're going to survive or not um so anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy uh, make sure to follow my strava it's, link is in below in the description below um i should be doing an ftp at ftp test soon um i think i've got two weeks left um we've got some good intensity coming um this week and a good good block of volume slash intensity for this one and then i reckon my ftp is going to go up by 20 watts or something stupid um which will be good fun <laughs> and then um yeah and then we should be back to almost business again um as we were last year. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoy. And I'll see you in the next one. Eh?